A segment of South Carolina's fan base is starting to question, is Shane Beamer really the man for this job? And I would say the answer to that question is he needs more time to build this program. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks Podcast. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast and a staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. Thank you all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first watch or listen for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. The South Carolina Gamecocks, obviously, as of this moment, are in the midst of a down year here in 2023. It has not always been pretty for South Carolina this football season. And because of some of the low moments this football program has dealt with this fall, there are some Gamecock fans out there. I don't think a ton, but there are definitely some out there that are starting to wonder if Shane Beamer is truly the man to lead this football program in the future. And in spite of what all has happened this season, I think Shane Beamer needs to be allowed to coach through at least the 2025 season. Why do I think this way, you may ask? Well, Shane Beamer's biggest strength is his ability to recruit and acquire talent. And that is what championship contending teams excel in. It is what you have to be able to do if you want to compete with the very best in the sport of college football. You look at the top title contenders this season as of right now. The Georgia Bulldogs, Ohio State Buckeyes, Texas Longhorns, Alabama Crimson Tide, and Michigan Wolverines all currently rank in the top 14 of 24-7 sports team talent composite rankings. Basically, a ranking that slots the teams that have the most talent. South Carolina currently ranks 22nd in that list. But they have a ways to go as far as blue chippers are concerned or four- and five-star prospects that they have currently on their roster. Because there is a gap here that is definitely starting to build, even in just the SEC alone. I've already looked ahead, and I have combined the 2024 recruiting classes to this point in this cycle, along with the team talent composites, that all of the SEC teams have for the 2023 season. And I did all this to basically formulate a 2024 team talent composite list. And based on the projected talent, which does not counter in transfers or potential underclassmen leaving early for the NFL draft, South Carolina would have two five-stars and 29 four-stars heading into the 2024 season. That would make them the 10th most talented team in the entire conference out of 16 teams. Now get this, the team that is one spot ahead of South Carolina on this list is the Auburn Tigers. And the Tigers in 2024, again under the same criteria, they would have two five stars and 45 four stars. And the reason that there's such a big gap is because there are certain programs that are always going to have a slightly filled cupboard, no matter what hard times they go through potentially as a football program. And that select group, at least in the SEC, includes teams like Alabama and Georgia, obviously, but it also includes Texas A&M. It will eventually include Texas and Oklahoma. Florida and LSU, you could make a case for. You could also maybe throw out Auburn and Tennessee. That is sort of the group that even if they have, say, a bad coaching hire and they have to fire that coach 
in three or four or five years, they're going to still have some decent talent on that roster for the next coach to work with and maybe try to develop. South Carolina just does not have that luxury to the same degree as those football programs. Programs like South Carolina and an Arkansas or Kentucky, they have to go through four or five year cycles to really fill out their roster evenly and accumulate the same level of talent as some of these other schools possess in the group that I just mentioned. And to this point, while yes, the on-field results this fall have not been good enough, Shane Beamer has been doing a great job of bringing in talent. Through his first three cycles to this point, if the 2024 cycle ended today, Shane Beamer, for every cycle right now, is averaging a class of .665 stars and 9.4 stars. So basically around 10 blue chippers every recruiting class. Now, if you added in a 2025 class with the same average that I just threw out there, South Carolina could have 35 four stars and two or three five stars in 2025. That would be 37 blue chippers. And if you applied that number to the 2023 season right now, South Carolina would have the 16th most talented team in terms of blue chippers in the entire country. I know that was a lot of numbers that I just threw out there, and I know I just sounded like I probably just talked in circles. But my whole point in bringing all of that up is that Shane Beamer, while it is taking a couple of years, he is bringing in the talent that this program needs to compete at the level that they want to compete at. And so if South Carolina were to fire Shane Beamer for whatever reason, after maybe 2024 or maybe, you know, at halfway through the 2025 season, unless things really go south, the Gamecocks have got to avoid doing this, in my opinion. Because if you fire Shane Beamer, then what is going to happen is you'll also have a mass exodus of players that leave this football program. And that would include a lot of high-profile names, more than likely. Guys that were some of the best recruits in some of these classes that he has brought in and that he is continuing to bring in as we speak. And what you're going to basically do if you're South Carolina is you are resetting your roster-building clock. You're now not maybe back at square zero like Shane Beamer was just about at, but you're now at square one, one and a half. And the very next coach now has a couple of years of recruiting to make up for because of that roster exodus because you fired Shane Beamer. That's not to say that if the Gamecocks were to go like 1-11 or 2-10 next year that you should just keep Shane Beamer just because of recruiting. No, at that point, if fans did not want Shane Beamer around here anymore, I would understand why. But if South Carolina can improve in 2024, let's say win 7-8 games, and then go into 2025 and they still seem like they're taking the right steps in every facet of the program, then even if it's not 9-10 wins like I know fans desperately want to see, you've just got to give the man a bit more time. He has not been perfect. He definitely has to make at least some changes in certain aspects of this program this offseason. No question about that. But when you look at recruiting and how important it is and how good Shane Beamer is at recruiting and bringing in talent, you cannot afford to make a knee-jerk reaction here in terms of whether or not Shane Beamer should be the head coach of this football program moving forward. So yes, things have not been pretty this fall, but don't let that cloud sort of your long-term outlook for this football program as we look ahead to the next couple of years at the kind of talent that South Carolina could be putting out there on the football field. And speaking of incoming talent, we're going to continue talking about some of these 2024 commits that could very well be on campus here in just a couple of months. And we're going to talk about a couple of high-profile names today in Dante Reno and Kelvin Hunter in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. 
That's 150 bucks if your team wins. The Carolina Panthers, their win total has jumped up to four and a half wins from three and a half wins after they defeated the Houston Texans this past Sunday in Charlotte. I know that's not a massive jump, but the over under for the Carolina Panthers at this four and a half is currently set at minus 110. So same exact odds. What do you think they're going to go over four and a half or under four and a half? If you think you know what the Carolina Panthers are going to do the rest of the way, well, now's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day. And as always, a really big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecocks sports coverage. If you like what you have been seeing from the Locked On Gamecocks podcast and you want future alerts and notifications on shows, whether it is on YouTube or or wherever you get your audio podcasts daily, then be sure to subscribe on YouTube and click that bell. And on your audio podcast app, just be sure to give us a follow. And also, if you would like to, you could also give us a five-star rating, which can help us grow our audience right here on the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Either way, I really appreciate all of you for tuning in already to today's show. But... Let's dive into one of South Carolina's most high-profile commits for the 2024 class in four-star quarterback commit, Dante Reno. Dante Reno, some might call him the architect of this 2024 class because I want to say he was the very first guy that committed in this class. All the way back in June of 2022, he's been a big-time part of of recruiting these guys on campus, trying to get them to join this class and basically join forces with him in terms of playing here at South Carolina for their college career. So what are the Gamecocks going to get in Dante Reno himself? Well, Dante Reno, in terms of his biggest strength at the quarterback position, it is by far his overall touch and accuracy that he puts on his passes. Dante Reno, when you watch his film, it is really impressive just how often he puts the ball where only his receivers can get it. He is great at throwing the ball to where it is going out in front of his target. Maybe it's going up a little bit high, depending on the situation, or maybe he's threading the needle and throwing it right into their chest to try and help them protect the football from an oncoming defender that's running up from right behind them. Dante Reno is very savvy and he's very smart at knowing where he's got to place his throws to give his receivers the best chance to succeed on a passing play. And that's not something that you get very often to this advanced of a degree for a kid that is his age. Oh, and by the way, he can also do this kind of stuff on the run when moving outside of the pocket as well. So it's not like he's got to be sitting back there with a clean pocket all day long for him to be able to put touch on his passes. He also can do it under duress as well, which quite frankly, these days you got to have at the quarterback position. Now, with all that being said, how is it going to help this quarterback room and the offense as a whole? Well, in my opinion, Dante Reno, when he gets to South Carolina's campus and officially enrolls and becomes a part of this football program, he is going to elevate this entire quarterback room because he excels at what is deemed the most important trait for a quarterback, which is accuracy. It's something that you hear coaches mention all the time in terms of the one thing that they want their quarterbacks to have, which is accuracy, because it is apparently the toughest thing to manipulate. You can't really change mechanics a whole lot to where all of a sudden, maybe a guy goes from a 50% completion percentage to a 65% completion percentage. You just aren't able to do that very easily with quarterbacks. So when a guy comes in and already has great accuracy with his throws, then that gives their coaches a great baseline to work with. And the other thing is, Dante Reno is also a coach's son. His father is actually the head coach at Yale. So Dante Reno, he's not going to have as big of a learning curve as most true freshmen would at the quarterback position coming into an SEC football program, and 
he's also going to have inherent intangibles that you also don't always get with incoming freshmen. The point is, from a mental standpoint, more than likely from a maturity standpoint, South Carolina is going to get a kid that's going to probably approach this game like he is five or six years older than he actually is. And when you have that kind of guy in your quarterback room, it's just inherently going to make everybody step up their game and want to work harder and want to get better because they know that that kid, that dude, is in that room. Even a guy like the Norris Sellers, for as talented and as athletically gifted as he is, I'm sure that he's going to push himself even harder when Dante Reno gets here to Columbia. Now, that leads me into this. How much playing time could Dante Reno get in the 2024 season? My answer to that question is, um, I don't think he's going to get much. I think, quite frankly, uh, it would be a surprise if Dante Reno does not redshirt in 2024. Lenore Sellers, in my opinion, he is probably the early odds-on favorite to be the starting quarterback for the Gamecocks in 2024. If I had to pick someone as of this very moment, Luke Doty is a guy that's obviously been around for a very long time. He has experience. He has started in multiple SEC football games. That is invaluable. You cannot put a price tag. You cannot put a numerical value on that. So it will still be important and pivotal for him to be a part of this quarterback room, whether he is starting next year or he is the backup to likely Lenore Sellers. You've also got a Tanner Bailey in this quarterback room, a guy that admittedly, you know, I hate to say he kind of is sometimes a bit of a forgotten man, but Tanner Bailey has also got some talent with the arm that he possesses. So it's not like Dante Reno is just going to walk in here and just take over maybe that backup role or be the starting quarterback from day one. If he does do that, then I mean, heck, he might be the one that we got to talk about as being potentially one of the best quarterbacks that's ever played here. But to put it bluntly, I think South Carolina, in terms of what they possess in that quarterback room right now, I think that Dow Loggins, he's got a great situation going there at that spot. To where a guy like Dante Reno, as talented as he is, and as much of a leader I think he's going to be when his time comes, his time will not be immediate. His time will be down the road. And I think that that is a good thing for South Carolina's quarterback room that that is the case. So while he might not be playing a whole lot this next season, make no mistake about it. Dante Reno, it is going to be very interesting to see how he develops in this football program and just how much of an impact he makes on this quarterback room once he arrives to Columbia. Now, of course, while you need to have great offensive play to win football games, the old saying goes, the defense is what wins championships. In South Carolina, when it comes to recruiting safeties, they have just been killing it on the recruiting trail for the past several cycles. And that has continued in the 2024 class with safety commit Kelvin Hunter, who might actually be the best safety in that position group in one particular athletic trait. I'll touch on what that trait is in just a few moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy and what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, and LED headlights, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you'll get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. Let's talk about four-star safety commit Kelvin Hunter now. 
The thing that sticks out to me about Kelvin Hunter is the kind of athlete that this kid is. This is a guy that just flies around all over the football field when you watch his film from the past couple years at West Florence High School. But the thing that sticks out the most to me when it comes to Kelvin Hunter's athleticism is just how fluid his overall movement is. Just like Dylan Stewart, his change of direction on the football field is just absolutely effortless. And when you pair it up with the straight line speed that he also has, he can pursue and tackle any ball carrier on the football field. So how is Kelvin Hunter going to help out this safety position group and this defense as a whole? Well, he's going to add more athleticism and speed to this defense, which I think you're starting to see is a reoccurring theme with some of these defensive commits in this 2024 class with guys like Dylan Stewart and Wendell Gregory. That is going to continue with Kelvin Hunter. But in terms of the safety position itself, I actually think that in terms of his ability to just turn his hips and run sideline to sideline or really just anywhere on the football field, Kelvin Hunter, once he gets to campus, he might be the best out of that entire group. And that includes guys like Nick Emmonworry, DQ Smith, and Jalon Kilgore. That says a lot about the kind of athlete that Kelvin Hunter is when you've got not just two, but likely a third freshman All-American on this football team at the safety position, and you might be the best athlete out of the entire bunch once you get here. That is a nightmarish thought to have, at least for South Carolina's opponents, starting in the 2024 season. So where do I think Kelvin Hunter would slide in in this defense? That's pretty easy for me. I think that he is a bona fide strong safety or box safety, as some would like to call it. This is a guy that you want closer to the line of scrimmage and being a factor in rush defense because that is really his specialty. Kelvin Hunter, again, he is great at pursuing and tackling. And in my opinion, with what all he's got in terms of his overall speed and his agility, he can chase down any ball carrier that he goes up against on the football field. So this is a guy that you want to have in the box more often than not. Now, in regards to his playing time, again, at the very beginning, it's probably going to be pretty difficult to get playing time when, again, you've got guys like DQ Smith, Nick Emmonworry, and also Jalon Kilgore in front of you. So that might be a bit of a stretch to say he'll get a bunch of snaps defensively, but I do think that Kelvin Hunter is absolutely going to be playing on special teams a lot. I think that he is going to be a kid that from day one, Pete Limbo is going to say, yeah, you're going to be on like three quarters of my special teams units. And I wouldn't blame him. So I think that Kelvin Hunter, he will be primarily a special teamer in year one. Do not think that he is going to red shirt like I think with Dante Reno. And who knows? He could have an opportunity to get some more snaps on defense as the 2024 season progresses. But again, as we've all seen, you know, we, we cannot keep it, we can't keep expecting that these guys are going to come in here and they're going to be ready by games one and two. I know that DQ Smith pulled it off. I know Nick Amawari pulled it off and Jalen Kilgore did as well. I don't think it's totally fair to Kelvin Hunter to expect that he's now going to be the fourth safety in the last three years to be able to pull off that same feat. But nonetheless, who knows? He could end up surprising me. I think that he is one of the best signings in this class. And again, it is just an embarrassment of riches that South Carolina is racking up at that safety position. It's going to be a lot of fun to see those guys fly around in the football field in 2024. There is no question about that. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope that y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show as always. What are y'all's thoughts on how much time Beamer needs? Do you think that Shane Beamer should be able to turn everything around in 2024? Or do you think that he should get a little bit more time than that and maybe more time to acquire more talent for this roster? And also, what are your thoughts on 2024 commits Dante Reno and Kelvin Hunter? And what kind of role do you think they could play for their position group and this football team in 2024? 
Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But as always, thank y'all once again for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.